Istanbul, Turkey. Cheers. Cheers. So, so much, much for Carver. Is this Turkish delight? I'll be in drag to my famous <laughs> carpet man. You're the carpet man, I'm the carpet lady, yeah? Yeah, carpet lady. Woo! <laughs> Sheriff. I think that's right. Hey, <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Istanbul. Turkey. After a week filming something very exciting in Cyprus, we have made it to the fifth largest city in Europe. Sometimes mistaken as the capital of Turkey, but Istanbul. And what a way to start our trip. Sat in one of the most popular streets with a Turkish coffee. They say a Turkish coffee, a good Turkish coffee, can last with you up to 40 years. And Oh, that is really good. That's gonna stay with me at least for the whole of the day. We are sat facing the beautiful 14th century Galata Tower. We have a few days here exploring the city. We are so excited. And what this a place. This is unreal. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. This is such a cool location. We actually have so much to see and do here. I think there's just gonna be way too much for us to do. But once we have finished our coffee, we are actually... Heading up. <laughs> Hello, can I have two tickets please? Thank you very much. No steps, We're going up in a lift. Wow, this is insane. We've come up to the top of the Galata Tower. Our tickets were 100 lira each, which is about five pounds. It's very windy up here, but the views are incredible. You can see the Bosphorus River, how it splits the country by Europe and Asia. I think it's actually the only country in the world that's split by continent, which is so, so cool. But wow, these views are amazing. Wow, wow, wow. Just look at these views. I've got the Turkish coffee moustache off my lips. Now this is of course a very touristy area. So is the street leading up to the Galatas Tower. Everyone's trying to get their Instagram photos, but it's so worth it. It's one of the best views you're gonna get in all of Istanbul. During the 17th century, there was actually no roof on this thing. Um, so I can presume it's pretty cold in the winter. It's actually really cold. We're wearing a coat in Istanbul in Turkey. I never thought that would happen, but just, what a place to take this in. We skipped breakfast to come to this place. As Matt said, we skipped breakfast. So that only means we need to find something to eat. And I think I found the best baklava in Istanbul. Getting my exercise in before I eat loads of baklava. Where are you taking me? We're doing baklava. <laughs> We're doing all, all this because this. of your obsession <laughs> <laughs> with <laughs> baklava. <laughs> I am way too excited. I have found it. Karakoy Gloglu. I'm sure my Turkish pronunciation will get better. Let's get baklava. There is way too much to choose from and I'm kind of really confused. This is very hectic. I don't know what I'm doing. It's very um, posh in here as well. It's super, super posh and there is just, there's more baklava than I've ever seen in my whole entire there's life. A, there's, a, there's a burger baklava. I have to get a burger. There's takeaway baklava. Just so much baklava. Okay. You so much? Hey. So, so much, much baklava. baklava. <laughs> Honestly, so much baklava, but I went for, in the end, the burger one because it is the most unique thing I've ever seen. So, pastry, pistachio, honey, I think, all sorts of goodness. Made into a burger. Very unique. Mm. Oh. That is such good baklava, wow. This is the origin of the first baklava bakery in Istanbul, so I'm expecting big things. I've gone for the most traditional looking one. Oh wow, it's good. The pastry is almost like a croissant. And then it's just so sweet as well. I don't know how we're gonna eat all of these. We've got like six and a burger. I'm pretty full after that baklava. I feel like it's a bit of an acquired taste. I'm getting there. It's not my favorite yet, but we are getting there. We're actually now crossing the Galata Bridge and it's basically fisherman's heaven. I have never seen so many fishermen in one spot. They're all coming here catching the, I don't know what fish. I'm not sure whether I would eat it. I'm not a fish eater, um, but look, there's so many here. Instagrammers. Instagram bought us here. Or actually, Instagram bought 
Molly here. We have come <laughs> to the studio rooftop. There actually used to be a coffee shop where people used to come up to and get their photos of the views over Istanbul. Unfortunately, the roof there collapsed. So they've sort of set up these Instagram coffee shops where you can come, you come over, you get your photo, and you get the amazing view. The life of Instagram. How, how do you feel? I feel fancy. How about that? <laughs> and this is the behind the scenes of Instagram. Back to reality. Um, that was extremely unlike us. Basically, you have to pay uh, 200 lira, which is about 10 pounds, and you get a certain amount of time on carpets with props to get your photos. Uh, we didn't get the seagulls because of the wind today, but I think it was worth it. Great views. Right next door, actually, is the Suleiman Mosque, which we are gonna go and check out. There's a lot of them here in Istanbul and this is number one that we're going to check out. This is impressive. Just look at this place. This is the Suleiman Mosque. I think it was built in 1557. It's not the largest mosque in Istanbul but it is the grandest. It really is. We're going to see a lot throughout our time exploring the city and I'm really pleased that we saw this one. It wasn't necessarily on our list. We spotted it from the rooftop and came running over here and it was Definitely worth it. This is huge. I've never seen a mosque so big. And like Matt said, it is the most grand and it is the most beautiful. Apparently, Suleiman, who was one of the longest reigning right sultans yeah. of the Ottoman Empire, apparently he wanted it to be built in a certain colour and for him to have cemeteries outside, soup kitchens inside and a massive bazaar, which I believe is right near it. That was actually mesmerizing. It's free to go inside. Obviously you can't go during the five times a day that they pray, but we have just found this secret rooftop. We're gonna keep it a secret. If you wanna find out, well, it is. Comment below and we'll let you know. But look at the view. You can come up here, you can have some shisha, chill out in the freezing Istanbul <laughs> winter. But wow, did not anticipate this amount of wind. But this little hidden one, look at the views you get this way, mosque this way, shisha <laughs> this way. Shisha to the Grand Bazaar, one of the oldest and biggest shopping centers in the world. And now I'm in a lamp store. Make sure you ask nicely because you are not meant to film in the lamp stores. Molly done her best. <laughs> sweet, best talking. Sweet, sweet talking. Talking of sweet talking. The Turkish delight in here looks amazing. Which way do we go? I don't know, I'm lost. There's actually 61 covered streets and over 4,000 stores. So you could get lost here all day. We are lost. We're lost. There's so much. Do you want to try one? Which one do you try? What is your favourite? What yeah, is the best Turkish delight? Turkish delight. Uh, Turkish delight and uh, halwa. What flavour is that? Honey. Ooh. Sacho. Elmin. Wow. Azina. There's so many. <laughs> yeah. Can we try one? Bamugrana. Oh my gosh. Wow. Is this Turkish delight? This is fancy Turkish delight. Oh wow, thank you thank very much. You. So what flavour is this? This is almond, pistachio, almond, pistachio and honey. honey. Whoa, are you ready? Oh, it's crunchy. It's good. It's really, really good. It doesn't taste like licorice, it's very nutty. And what flavour is this one? Strawberries? Rosa. Rose. Rose. Oh, lokum. We call it Turkish delight. So this is what we know as Turkish delight, right? Mmm, that's the taste. That is the taste of turkey. I love that. It's so good. Yeah, it's More? Nutella. Turkish Nutella? Delight. Yeah. Nutella Turkish delight. Mmm, <laughs> it's really good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our first purchase. Our first purchase. Turkish delight. 
So that whole bag came to less than two English pounds. We found the prices in Istanbul to be crazy, crazy cheap at the moment. Unfortunately, the lira has sort of crashed in the last few years. A pound is now around 20 lira. When we last came to Turkey 10 years ago, a pound was only two and a half lira. You can see how much the lira has actually crashed, which obviously gives you more for your money, but I don't know if it really benefits the locals. Now being dragged by a famous carpet man. <laughs> Famous carpet man, <laughs> the Grand Bazaar. Wow. Beautiful. Handmade carpet. Yeah, America, Italy, Espanol. Handmade carpet. Makine, carpet no good. Holding the carpet. And yes. this. I'm the carpet lady. Carpet, <laughs> original carpet, handmade. Very, very good. Ch uh, China carpet no good. Ha handmade carpet, very, very nice. You heard it here. Very, very nice. Uh, so you're the carpet man, I'm the carpet lady. Yeah, uh, carpet lady. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you bye. Bye. Share FA. Share FA. I think that's right. Our first FA. We actually made it out of the bazaar. God knows how. I do not know how we made it we out of there. the coolest characters. The craziest characters. I think that's what it's all about. And then we found this gorgeous rooftop called, I think it's Panorama. No, this is called Arden, isn't it? Arden. This, Arden rooftop. This has a very unreal view. We've got the sun set in. I've got my first FA. How is it? Is it good? Oh. You can't complain with that. This view and this food. Unbelievable. There's so much to fit in in Istanbul. We couldn't do it all in one day, so we will have to continue tomorrow. But we couldn't end today without trying something traditional. And um, this is manti. It smells so good. Basically, I would say in Turkey, it is a very famous dish. It's a little it's dumpling. Like ravioli. Yeah, and they call it ravioli as well because it's sort of in between, but it's filled with like cheese and it's got tomato on it. We actually have had it before, but we had it slightly differently. I think it was baked. Yeah, so this is just like boiled mini dumplings because manti is a plural, I believe, for dumpling. Nice go, just cheesy tomatoey dumpling goodness. Hello. What flavour do you recommend? Vanilla, chocolate, lemon, blackberry, pistachio, caramel. Uh, oh my god, decision. No, caramel. Caramel? Yeah. It's blue. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh no, we can't keep up. Hoppa! Hoppa! Oh no, where's the ice cream cone gone? Hoppa! <gasps> my heart is beating so fast. Thank you. Oosh. He's too... Oh. Oh! <laughs> Did you drop it? No, he's too uh, quick. Vanilla? Yeah. Bravo, bravo, bravo! Hey, <laughs> mashallah! <laughs> What a way to start a morning in Istanbul. Good morning and with my breakfast, this is one huge ice cream. That was definitely the way to start your day in Istanbul, the city of Seven Hills. Sat by the Bosphorus. It was worth skipping breakfast, it definitely was, <laughs> to enjoy an ice cream with the most charismatic people we have found anywhere else in the world. I'm set up for the day. Hello. After a 10 minute taxi ride, we have made it to Belat. Taxis are so cheap, by the way, in Istanbul. For a 10 minute taxi, it was less than one English pound. But this is Belat. It's one of the oldest neighborhoods in Istanbul. Somewhat of a hidden gem. Some of these houses behind me date back to 50 to almost 200 years old. And it is beautiful, multicolored buildings, the old Jewish quarter. There's some cafes that we're trying to find. And we're really the only ones here, us and the locals. We accidentally took one wrong turn and turned up at like the Balamori Street. There was a program back in the UK called Balamori where it had all these small colourful houses. And, and this is it. This is literally it. This is bringing back memories. I love this. It can't get any more local than this. Really steep hills and they're hanging there washing across the 200 year old buildings. This is my morning workout. Cheers. Cheers. This is the perfect place to hide from the afternoon rain and them spices. It definitely wakes you up along with the Turkish coffee. And just look at the architecture in here. Hey, ah. Oh. 
We're now being invited for tea. And spices. Spicy, spicy tea. tea? Ah, thank you very much. Wow. Cheers. 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 Is that right? Am I, I right? So. Cherefe. The love thing. Let me see. Wow. wow. So fragrant. Oh, that smells good. Really nice. This for flu, for cold. Yeah, that smells like it would heal you. <laughs> I feel better already. The smells are so good. Smell that one. Oh. Oh, that is nice. That is really good. Me spice. It like wakes me up. <laughs> I feel alive. He was so nice. And I bought a one pound Turkish Delight. Snickers. Mm. It is like a Snickers. So good. Uh, <laughs> there's no space for so much food. Thank Woo! you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. We literally can't catch a break from this rain, so we've run in for lunch and we found this cool, like, sort of street foodie place that does the apparently one of the best lamachan in all of Istanbul. It's basically like a Turkish pizza. We've got spices, you've got minced meat. We've actually had it before, but we also have a pide, which I haven't tried before, so I'm going to try that now, which is a cross between a lamachan and an Italian <laughs> pizza, and it's from the Black Sea area. It looks so good with all this cheese. Oh my god, it's dripping. Out of 10. Oh wow. Quick rating. It's literally a pizza. And with lamachan, you roll it up and take a bite. You can't beat it. We are full for five pounds or less and we have made it to the Agia Sophia Mosque. Arguably one of the most famous things to see here in Istanbul. It's practically opposite the Blue Mosque, which is one of the other really important things that you should see here. Um, unfortunately, the Blue Mosque is under construction, so it does mean that you can't really get into it um, and see the beauty of it. However, the Hagia Sophia has so much history. Apparently, it was a church for over a thousand years. It then became a mosque for 500 years and then a museum. And now it is actually a functioning mosque, uh, but it is just beautiful and it's pink. The sun has finally come out for us, but the queue to get inside looks, it looks huge. We haven't got time. Istanbul's so big, there's so many things to see, so many things to do, but we have a really good plan B. Sherefe, and here is our little hidden gem. This is the Seven Hills restaurant, and their rooftop overlooks Hagia Sophia, the Blue Mosque, the Bosphorus, out at sea, you can see the islands, you can see everything here, and of course you can get an ice cold, at first, this really is a little hidden gem. There's hardly anyone up here either because the sun's only just come out. I mean, look at this. This is definitely a great plan B. <laughs> Seagulls, Blue Mosque, Hagia Sophia. Oh my God, my friend is speaking to us. <laughs> we have our tickets and for one pound for both of us, we're heading from Europe to Asia. Finally. This has got to be the best pound we've ever spent. You've got to dodge the seagull poo, but the sun is setting over the European side and we are heading to Asia for the first time. I can't believe we're only heading there now, but it's so windy. And just like that, we have made it to Asia in 10 minutes. As you do, we've just popped across to Asia from Europe in less than 10 minutes across the Bosphorus Strait. And we have absolutely no plans at all. It feels a little bit different. So we had the choice between Ushkado and Kadokoi, and we decided to come to Kadokoi. It's meant to be like the neon lights, the bright, the energetic, Asian side and it's the one place in Istanbul so far that we have found all these bar streets. <laughs> it's definitely very us. It doesn't matter if we are in Europe or Asia, one thing always remains the same and we will find somewhere to have a beer. But here in Kadokoi on the Asian side it feels a lot more like a local nightlife hip-ish area if that makes any sense. The beers are half the price of what we found on the European side which is great and we feel like one of the only tourists here which again is very very nice not many venture over to the Asian side but I say it's definitely worth it. it sort of reminds me a little bit of like the nightlife streets you find in Hong Kong yeah, definitely. or Japan or something like that and the beer's really cheap. Cheers to coming all the way to Asia for a beer.
was Istanbul. Two whole days of craziness, sensory overload, amazing food, and the most hospitable people ever. We got the ferry back from Kadikoy and we had an unbelievable sunset. It was amazing. Uh, we only just made the ferry back as well, which was so funny. Um, Istanbul has been great. I think I would highly recommend it. We loved the food, we loved the people, we loved the places. Um, and like I said, it is a sensory overload, so be very prepared for that. It is exciting, it is exhilarating, and there is so much to see and do. We didn't, we only scratched the surface. We are actually away uh, here in Istanbul with views. We are filming for a very exciting project which we will share with you soon and so will they. Um, so over the next few days there's going to be a couple cool videos that we're going to be able to film. We're excited to share that with you um, but for now that is our first two days in Istanbul over and we will see you in the next one for whatever we get up to.